Hello and welcome to CineTracer version 0 0.61. Uh, in this update we have changed quite a bit about the cameras. So first off you'll see the free camera, tripod, dolly straight, dolly circle, crane, virtual camera, and geared head. These are the new cameras here and now the kind of default cameras. Over here now is legacy cameras. These will still work technically but they're no longer going to really interact with the storyboard system correctly. Uh, they're mostly there uh, in case you're using them in current projects, but they will be deprecated uh, at least by dot seven of the update. So we're going to focus on these cameras here. So we're going to bring out a free camera, a tripod, a dolly straight, a dolly circle, and a crane. And I'm going to try to go through these kind of quickly. So hopefully you, you have watched the other videos on how to use the cameras. I'm going to hit up, 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 up like this. And you can change the sensor size if you switch to editor mode, but I'm just going to jump right in here. So again, it's just moving your mouse to turn, uh, pan, tilt his mouse like this. And you scoot around with WASD and space and control are going to do your third axis, which in this case is up and down. And you're scrolling now to change the focal length. If I hit E, I have different things I can change. For instance, uh, if I go to crawl on speed, we're moving very slowly, which is going to be good for live operating. You hit V, we go into full screen mode here. I'm going to go back to the f-stop and open up just a bit. If I hit tab, we're in full screen view. And now, if I hit enter, like that, I'm going to hop out here. And now if I hit B, or go up to uh, the boards here, we have our first storyboard. And this system needs an update, but at least now it's taking the correct aspect ratio for the new camera system, and that's what's important. So uh, this is now uh, all operational, and this will save. So you can change the sensor size here, and this is now going to accurately uh, be reflected in the field of view of the camera. That's the big update. And the storyboards now also are going to uh, work with that system. So let's look at some of the other cameras and I'll show you how they're working right now. So we're going to put uh, a tripod here. What's important to know about the tripod is the way you uh, push it. Oh, okay, there's a little bug there. I'll fix that later. But uh, the way that you, okay, <laughs> the way that you uh, face the tripod is important. That happens when the collisions aren't turning off. One of the legs still has a collision left on it. I'll uh, get that in a different update. Uh, so we're going to jump into this tripod. So if you use WASD, you can move side to side and forward, but there's no way for you to rotate the tripod. So that's important to understand. We can go up with space and down with control here. So up and down, and then the mouse does pan and tilt. So while you can turn the camera head around, you cannot actually spin the entire tripod itself. This is important to know. So we're going to zoom in and I'm going to do a little bit of a camera move here. We'll do a pan. So I'm going to hold one like this. And I'm going to go over to here and land on sort of this like reasonable looking two shot, holding down two. And then I'm going to press one. And we are going to pan and tilt ourselves back to the first mark over five seconds. I'm going to hit two and we're going to pan back. So what's important to note here is that if I change heights like this or I move, this system doesn't care. It's only going to be setting marks for the pan and tilt. So try not to move once you do that. The, the point of this is that in the real world, when you're using a tripod, you're not going to be moving the tripod. In most cases, uh, it's not going to look very good if you do. Uh, this is primarily just to do a key for panning and tilting. So once you get your height, once you get your placement, just leave it the marks will only affect the pan and tilt for the tripod camera. Again, you can hop in here. Uh, we're out of focus, so I'll just hit a focus mark. If I hit two, it'll actually bring us back exactly to where it should be. This is a little bit dark in this view, so I'll open it up a bit. Uh, if I hit tab, I can see what the full view looks like. And I'm gonna hit enter, and that should have taken a storyboard. And I'll jump out of here like this and B. Uh, we're still in here apparently and there's our new uh, storyboard added there you can change the order you can write on it again i need to update this system quite a bit but updating cameras took quite a while 
uh, from a design point of view. So this would be next. So we could have more metadata in there, I think would make a lot more sense. And this design is overall very ugly. So work on that as well. So that is the tripod, uh, pretty straightforward. There's no longer a person stuck to it, which was cool, but actually kind of bad for performance. So I uh, got rid of that. So the new uh, dolly we have here is a little bit different from before. Uh, first of all, you can use a gizmo to move it. That's very new. Uh, that was not possible given the older system. So this is uh, much improved, I think. And now if you want to add dolly track to this, you can add a lot of dolly track. So people were asking for infinite. I think 100 is, is quite a bit. This should be enough for most, most use cases. Uh, again, we'll just change the size of the sensor. We will add more of these, uh, especially for mixed reality mode. Uh, but there we go. We're using a, a regular like Alexa 11 3 sensor here, 16 by 9. So uh, important with the dolly, or this particular dolly, if you uh, hold W and S, that's forward, you're going to move up and down the dolly track. Side to side does nothing. Space is going to go up, and then control is down on the arm. So this is how a dolly works uh, in the real world, or at least this type of dolly. You know, your typical uh, pneumatic dolly here. So I'll show you how the keyframes work. Uh, it's gonna, we're gonna go up to it. Well, maybe we'll probably end in a shot like this. It's a little wide in my opinion, but we'll hold two. This is the ending. And then we'll pull back to here and I'll boom down just a bit here like that. And uh, start full frame, I guess, like full head to toe like that. That's pretty cool. Holding one, then I'm gonna hit two. And in this case, the dolly moves and the arm goes up and down and the pan and tilt works. So in this case, we're taking uh, pretty much all the different parameters when we're using the mark system, because again, this is how a dolly would work in the real world. And if you're trying to illustrate this to people on your set or test it and try to do something like this in the real world, we want to replicate that as well. Something important to note here, uh, if you want to do live moves, you can change the movement speed to crawl and then everything is very slow, which is, is nice. It's like a nice controlled move, especially on like a close-up. you would want to use something like this. And if you want to go really fast for some reason, uh, this is like not realistic at all, but you can zip around much faster. So all the speed controls for the cameras now are all unified with this kind of new UI system. So I'm pretty happy with that. Hop out of here and let's check out the circle dolly. So I need some like new icons for this, but anyway, this is the circle dolly. Uh, it's an interesting thing to try to place in the world because its origin is here. Uh, it's in the center of it, which is what I think makes the most sense. And so just like this dolly here, uh, it has the number of track, but that is going to be uh, from one to eight. So a full circle. Uh, so let's, let's hop in here and I'll just show you how this one works. Uh, this is subject to change for sure, but let's make this speed a little bit faster like this. And we're just gonna, scoot around the dolly track and you'll see that as we make it to the end here we're going to just keep looping so we can just set marks like wherever we need to on this system but something important to point out about this is you'll find is that even if i add like so i make like a half track or something like this uh, i'm not stopping you from going off of it I could, but it's it's it just kind of further complicates the system. So if you're trying to be realistic, you know, with this, just set it up so that you're not going off the track. So, uh, for instance, with this one, uh, I really need to update these gizmos and give us a better way to rotate things. I'm aware, uh, working on it. Uh, we're just gonna spin this here, which again, there's no apple boxes under this dolly, so it's a little crazy. But uh, we'll hop in. Uh, we're gonna pan over to something like this. And I don't know, this, I'm gonna set this as two for some reason. And we're gonna scoot over here like that. There's no in-between keyframes, so it's, you know, your, your pan and tilt are not optimal. Hey, what's up with this? There we go, holding one. And we're gonna hit two. And you know, if you're trying to keep this realistic, you just stay within the track that you would, uh, that you have. And this is pretty close to a 20 foot diameter dolly track, which is pretty much the most common one. There's a there's a smaller one and there's a bigger one, and depending on like what country you're in, they're slightly different sizes, but this is the most common one in uh, the States. So it's what I started with. We can definitely make other diameters in the future, but let's just start out with this. So that's the keyframe system for the circle dolly. Uh, it also does screenshotting just fine. Oh, we already have it here. So I'm gonna hit five and let's look at the crane. This acts just like you would think it, it does, but uh, I still wanna show it. So we'll hop in for the controls here. So left, and right, or um, A and D, you're gonna pan the arm uh, up, 
up and down essentially is W and S or using the controller. And then space and shift, the third axis for this type of camera controller is of course extending the crane itself. So we'll go up, up here, I'm gonna widen out a bit. And so if I hold one, I'm gonna set the first keyframes up in the air. We'll just kind of crash through and kind of land in front of this camera. That's kind of awesome actually. Like maybe like, I don't know, caring too much about this, but something like this, we're gonna hold two. That's the second mark. So we're gonna go up to one, pan tilt, on the arm and the head and extension all happening uh, with the mark system, which is pretty cool. So I tried to make the defaults for speed like pretty reasonable, um, given that it's a 30 foot <laughs> crane. But if you need to move much slower for close ups and whatnot, this is gonna be your speed crawl. Uh, you're probably gonna wanna use a controller, right? Like this, so this is like pretty slow for a crane to move. Um, but it's going to work for your nice uh, live operated cinematic moves if you want to work that way, which is kind of my preferred way, but I'm using the Mark systems a little bit more. And again, the Mark system is repeatable, so that's that's helpful. But this, this I like just kind of playing around and finding moves, you know, just finding it and experimenting. That's kind of half the reason I made Cinetracer, so that I could just kind of play around with camera moves without having to be there on set. So... Uh, I think that pretty much wraps it up for the update here. So again, things should be working with the storyboard system. Let me know if you do find any issues. This is assuming you're running a full screen 16 by 9 monitor, uh, as most of the game assumes that. Uh, so if you're running ultra wides or an off aspect ratio, it might be a little weird. Let me know. Uh, I'll test it on my MacBook Pro. That for sure has like kind of a square aspect ratio. So that's possibly an issue here, but the majority of computers are 16 by nine, and that's really what the system is designed around. So uh, in the future, things that I'm gonna be working towards with the camera system, though we'll probably take a tiny break here, uh, is that for the camera marks, uh, we only have a consistent speed of, or time of five seconds. So uh, it's within the system to be able to make it different speeds. I just need to kind of figure out how I wanna do that UI wise. There's also been requests to have more than two marks. That's also possible. It just starts to make things a little bit more complicated to do that. On the UI, again, it's just like, oh, there's like five buttons. It just, just starts to get a little bit clunkier, whereas one to two is very simple. I think most people grasp that very quickly. And uh, another thing that people have asked for, or some people have asked for, is to get rid of the smoothing at the end. So you'll see that this actually decelerates and has a smooth stop. I am kind of hard pressed to get rid of that by default but it could be an option. So those are things that we're looking at. Uh, I wanna have frame guides available and a couple other small things, but overall getting this camera redesign done was uh, a big deal and everything should save. Uh, and uh, let me know if you have any questions, requests, issues. Again, YouTube is really the best place. I know not everyone watches the YouTube videos, but YouTube and Instagram, that's really where I'm taking feedback for the system and where I am for the most part. So. Uh, I'm going to do a separate video completely on the virtual camera as that requires me to show um, how that works in a, in, a, in a much lengthier process. And the geared head, we have a video about that already. Neither of these will save with your scene, I believe at this point, uh, that may come in the future, but they're live operated. So um, they're not really meant to be saved anyway. They're meant to be for live operation. And then this one is uh, the precursor to the mixed reality camera, which will come in the uh, near future. So that wraps it up. And I'll see you guys on the next video.